Hey, so I study storytelling, and I'd like to talk to you all today about my favorite story. It's called, They Take Turns Using a Word They Like. It's extraordinary, says one woman. It is extraordinary, says the other. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, why would this be anyone's favorite story? It's like 10 words long, nothing really happens. And if we think about stories as being kind of just existing as words on a page, there really isn't much here, it's true. But I think this story is particularly great because it really highlights how weird reading fiction is. Because when we engage with a piece of fiction, we're not just dealing with words on a page. We're kind of dealing with everything else we know. So to give you an idea of what I mean by this, I'd like you to consider a couple of questions about this little short story. Uh, what do these women look like? Uh, what are they wearing? Where are they? And what are they looking at? What is it that's so extraordinary? You probably have answers to these questions already, maybe even before I ask the questions. Uh, your answers aren't going to be the same as your answers, necessarily. Uh, but the point is that you both have some good idea, some picture in your head of what's going on in this scene that's far more fleshed out than just what the text provides us. My dissertation looks at how this works. Uh, specifically, I'm looking at studies in the cognitive sciences about gesture, body language, facial expressions, and how these play into how we kind of imagine and understand and interpret art. So to return to the story, uh, I'd like you to consider another couple of questions. Uh, what is the women's bodily position? Where are they in relation to this extraordinary thing? How are they using facial expression and gesture to really accentuate what they're saying about it. You know, it is extraordinary. Now, in, no matter what we're reading, short or long, whether we're reading Fifty Shades of Grey on the train, or if we're reading this story here today, we always do this. We always fill in kind of gaps, plug in holes, because no matter the length of the text, we only get so much information. In an exceptionally short story such as this, there's a lot more gaps to fill because we're just not given as much. So we notice this kind of active role that we take a lot more. Because we get all of this, we get that there's a setting here. We know what these women look like. We can at least describe them to some extent, even though it's not there in the text. So it's my goal in merging these two fields of literary studies and cognitive science uh, to get a better idea of the active role that readers take in the construction of stories. Thank you.